Hello everyone and welcome to today's video where we are diving deep into the world of networking. Ever wondered how devices communicate in the vast realm of the internet? Well, we are going to explore the nitty gritty details. We will start with the IP address blocks and what's called subnetting, just ways to organize stuff in the digital world. Curious about subnets and subnet masks? Stick around, we have got the simple scoop. The star of the show is the subnet mask, a sort of secret code that helps break down IP addresses. After that, we will cover different types of IP addresses and then the benefits of subnetting. And before commencing, just a quick info for you. If you are an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for an online training and certification from prestigious universities and in collaboration with the leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity from the MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be your right choice. Through our courses, you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like advanced hacking concepts, network packet analysis, ethical hacking, network security, and over a dozen of others. So if you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comments and the description box. So let's start with the first topic. So how do IP addresses work? IPv4 address such as 172.31.45.6 may seem like regular numbers, but they are actually just a way of representing binary information. Imagine breaking down each address into four parts or blocks and each of these blocks is made up of eight bits, which are like tiny switches that can either be on or off, one or zero. Since there are eight bits in each block, we call them octets. And because there are four of these octets in an IPv4 address, the total bits for the entire address is 32 bits. So when you see an IP address like 172.31.45.6, each of these four parts is actually a group of eight switches in the on and off position, making up for a total of 32 bits. This binary representation is a way for computers to communicate and understand these addresses on the internet. To understand this, we will have a look at the chart. Let's consider the process of converting the IP address 172.20.30.40 into binary. All right. Now simply divide the address into four blocks, 172, 20, 30 and 40 and transform each block into binary adhering to binary conversion chart. It is essential to note that in binary one represents on while zero represents off. To convert the first block 172 into binary, begin at the chart's beginning and assign ones or zeros to the corresponding cells until their sum equals to 172. Repeat this process for each block in the IP address for like 20 also, for 30 also and for 40 also. Alright, now moving on to the next topic which is subnetting. So what is subnetting? Subnetting is a strategic process of dividing a network into smaller subnetworks or subnets with the goal of enhancing efficiency, security and overall performance. The primary advantage lies in allowing devices within a subnet to communicate directly, eliminating the need to traverse unnecessary routers. Beyond this, subnetting aids in organizing the network structure and elevating traffic congestion. In the process of subnetting, certain bits from the host part of an IP address are allocated to signify the subnet leading to adjustments in the subnet mask. The subnet mask presented as binary number delineates which bits on the IP address belongs to the network and which pertain to the host. For instance, a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 indicates that the initial 24 bits of the IP address represent the network, while remaining 8 bits represents the host. So this was about subnetting. Now let's understand the difference between subnets and subnet masks. The distinction between subnets and the subnet mask is crucial to understanding network architecture. While subnet mask plays a pivotal role in the concept of subnets, they are distinct entities. A subnet, short for subnetwork, refers to a specific segment of the network. This segment shares the overall network's IP address but possesses a unique subnet address. Essentially, a subnet allows for the logical division of a larger network into smaller, more meaningful units. On the other hand, a subnet mask serves a different purpose. It is numerical value that distinguishes between the part of an IP address corresponding to the subnet 
and the part that identifies the host within the subnet. So now, let's understand what is subnet mask. So a subnet mask is like a guide that helps computers understand the different parts of an IP address. Picture an IP address as a location where the network is the street name and the host is the house number. For example, consider the IP address 192.168.123.132. In this case, the first three sets of IP address 192.168.123 show the network while the last set specifies a particular device on that network. To make it simpler, we use a dot decimal system for IP addresses, breaking down the 32 binary bits, that is 4 sets of 8 bits, into more manageable groups. So the subnet mask acts as a kind of decoder, helping computers figure out which part of IP address is the network and which part identifies the specific device. It makes communication in networks easier by organizing these addresses in a way that devices can understand. Now let's have a look at its working. Alright, so how do subnet masks work? So subnet mask is a 32-bit numerical value that divides an IP address into distinct network and host address as we know. Now in the subnet mask, the network part is represented by all ones, while the host part consists of all zeros. For instance, a subnet mask like 255.255.255.0 indicates that initial 24 bits pertain to the network, leaving the 8 bits for the host. This subnet mask facilitates communication among devices within a subnet, which functions as a smaller network within a larger network. Subnetting achieved through subnet mask, minimizing the broadcast traffic, enhancing overall network efficiency and security. To apply a subnet mask to an IP address, a bitwise and operation between the two numbers is performed. For example, if the IP address is 192.168.1.100, and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, the resulting network address is 192.168.1.0. This signifies that the device is a part of subnet 192.168.1.0/24, where the slash 24 denotes the number of bits allocated to the network part. All right, so this was about the working of subnet mask. Now let's understand different types of IP addresses. Alright, so first of all we have is class A, which lies between 1.0.0.0 to 126.0.0.0. So reserved, these class is reserved for large networks. It allows for up to 126 networks with each network having almost 17 million unique host addresses. Alright, then we have is class B. Its range is 128.0.0.0 to 191.255.0.0. It is suitable for medium-sized networks. It permits around 16,000 networks, with each network supporting nearly 65,000 unique host addresses. Alright, now coming to class C. So class C ranges from 192.0.0 to 223.255.255.0, commonly used for smaller networks. With approximately 2 million available networks, each class C network can accommodate up to 254 unique host addresses. Then class D, 224.0.0 to 239.255.255.255. So this is the range of class D. Reserved for multicast groups, this class is not assigned for individual networks but is used for group communication. Devices that join a multicast group share information. After that class E. It ranges from 240.0.0 to 255.255.255.255. Reserved for purposes not intended for general use on public networks, Class E address are set aside for testing and development. So these were the different types of IP addresses. You can have a look at them. Now let's understand the benefits of subnet masks. First is enhanced security. So it bolsters defense mechanisms to protect against potential threats, ensuring the safety of data and communications. Then there is smooth data flow. It is the second benefit. It promotes smoother data flow, preventing slowdowns and interruptions, resulting in more efficient network. All right, then improve network performance. It enhances the speed and reliability of connections, optimizing the overall user experience, less network congestion, streamlines the network, minimizing delays, and improving overall productivity. Next is improve network performance. It enhances the speed and reliability of connections, optimizing the overall user experience. 
then at last we have is less network congestion. It streamlines the network and minimizing delays and improving overall productivity. All right, so these were the benefits of subnetting. So as we conclude our exploration into subnetting and IP addresses, we have covered the basics from how IP address blocks operate to the intricacies of subnetting and the role of subnet masks. Understanding the different types of IP addresses and the perks of subnetting adds depth to our knowledge. Implementing subnetting not only enhances security but also improves overall network efficiency. If you find this video insightful, drop your questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Make sure to like this video and drop down your comments. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting-edge domains including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.